How do you make a movie out of a 2,000 page epic? It helps if your audience already knows the material. Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments didn't just come out of nowhere. The kids in the audience knew the story thanks to Sunday School and they were waiting for the Red Sea to part the whole time. So when the Shaw brothers wanted to adapt the classic Chinese novel Shui Hu Juan, they made eight, or arguably nine and one third movies, only loosely related to each other with all-star casts. The novel, sometimes translated as Water Margin, Outlaws of the Marsh, or All Men Are Brothers, is one of the quote, four great novels of China, and had a massive influence on Japanese culture as well. It follows 108 bandits who assemble on a mountain called Liangshan in the middle of a swamp. Nine plus movies is a lot to handle, so I'm going to divide this review into two videos. The first one will give the scope of the story, with one origin story filmed to give you a taste, and the two epic bookends which Chang Che directed for the Shaw Brothers. The second video will deal with the movies about the novel's most popular hero, Wu Song, as portrayed by Ti Lung. None of this was filmed in chronological order. The stories are well known enough that it would be like asking why somebody did a movie about Moses before somebody did one about Noah. I'll skip over the early 60s Huang Mei Diao operas, Bride Napping and The Three Sinners, honestly because I haven't seen either of them yet. The first half of the novel Shui Hu Juan is a series of backstories on these 108 characters, how and why these heroes are forced to live outside the law. Naturally, it took multiple films for the Shaw Brothers to tell just a sampling of those origin stories. The purest of the lot is Pursuit from 1972. Yue Hua stars as Lin Chung, a man whose family has been assaulted by imperial forces and is hounded down as a criminal. It's a slow burner of a film. It's more of a character drama than an action film, so maybe not a great place for a newbie to launch into this series, even if the film takes place chronologically before the other movies in this review. But it gives the flavor of the novel's first half, with guys who just are unable to catch a break, and then they turn to life in the wild. Yue Hua is always reliable, and certainly is a great fit as Lin Chung. The best parts of the film, though, are Fan Mei Sheng, cast here as the priest Lu Jishun, or Sagacious Lu, who famously uprooted a tree with his bare hands. Fan's recasting throughout the series is a little confusing since he appears as Li Kuei, the Black Whirlwind, in the next two movies I'll discuss, but Fan fits both roles well. Black Whirlwind is the role he was born for. Still, he's great here as the not-so-Buddhist priest trying to defend his sworn brother Lin Chung. <laughs> If you don't know the novel, Water Margin is the place to start. The Shahs sank a lot of money and time into this film. Enormous sets and a star-studded cast that gets introduced lovingly one by one with a character and actor named on screen, and a musical sting for each. <laughs> Water Margin follows the Honorable Jade Unicorn and his companion Yang Qing as they're forced to become outlaws thanks to treachery from Jade Unicorn's wife and her lover. The studio didn't skimp on either extras or star power. Everybody is in this film, and eventually many of them get a chance to strut their stuff. However, David Chiang really steals the show as Yan Qing, a guy who basically does everything perfectly. The ladies love him, he's a wrestling champion, he's a skilled archer, and he plays a mean jazz flute. The movie's one weakness is a schizophrenic soundtrack. Are we watching a Shaft knockoff? A Western? Yeah. A Spaghetti Western? <laughs> Inspector Gadget? <laughs> Ferris Bueller? <laughs> The movie builds to a climax where six of the novel's favorite heroes square off against the bad guys, while a thousand soldiers spar in the background. It's probably the most epic thing the Shaw Brothers ever produced, and even if the story might be a little confusing to somebody who doesn't already know the novel, it's pretty satisfying. <laughs> The film's follow-up was All Men Are Brothers, an equally epic film, but nowhere near as coherent as the first one. It's essentially a series of vignettes building towards the siege of Hangzhou. The movie plays fast and loose with some plot points from the novel, but it does again offer a star-studded cast. David Chiang is again the center of the story, beat out only by the character actor Fan Mei Sheng as the Black Whirlwind, and by Ti Lung's terrible wig as the luscious locks of Wu Song. The movie starts with a series of famous battles which are more or less fan service, summing up a stretch of the novel which otherwise would have been skipped over between these two films. I always love it when they use the big bridge on the Clearwater Bay set for action scenes. The main plot eventually kicks in. It's centered around an attempted water attack on Hangzhou, with a team of spies on the inside. The action scenes are great, even if the plot means little to someone who's not a fan of the book. And the changes to who dies and when may annoy those who are diehard fans. Still a lot of satisfying fights and a decent conclusion to the series. <laughs> Watching these movies in retrospect, 
The thing that sticks in my mind is how a person reacts to a story they already know as opposed to one they may not. Pursuit carries serious weight if you know who Lin Chung is. All Men Are Brothers is tremendous fun if you already know the 108 Liang Shan bandits. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood becomes a tense film if you know the Manson murders are just lurking around the corner. But it's a meandering good time if you don't. Robert Zemeckis' Beowulf is a big, big, dumb, dumb action film. But if you know the epic poem, you see where writer Neil Gaiman was subverting the original story into a warning about unreliable narrators. I could imagine a Chinese person viewing Ben Hur for the first time and just being baffled by the crucifixion at the end. Context means everything, and none of us have enough context for everything. An aside, the portmanteau film, Trilogy of Swordsmanship, concludes with The Whitewater Strand, a 30-minute short that's forgettable except for a couple things. A. It has a great cast, including Ku Feng, Li Ching, Bolo Young, who you may know from Enter the Dragon and Bloodsport, and a brief team-up of T Lung and David Chiang, who I'd watch making sandwiches together, frankly. And B. There's a half-hearted attempt to make this a Shui Hu sequel, several characters being the sons and daughters of characters from the book. Weak sauce, but it's catnip for water margin fans, and not a bad way to spend 30 minutes for a mini kung fu epic. An aside to that aside, the second film in this portfolio is an excellent love story with uh, Lo Lie and Lily Ho. Check it out. I'll follow this up with a video on the most celebrated chapters of Shui Hu Zhan, the stories of Wu Song and Pan Jin Nian. Stay tuned.